Hi, welcome back. You know, ever since we did our two videos on carbonation, um, we've been getting questions in the comments about things that you can use to flavor your sparkling water or other things that you can carbonate. And we've experimented with a bunch of things and we've come up with a range of different things to flavor or to carbonate. And we're going to start off with some non-alcoholic drinks and then we're going to slide into some really tasty little cocktails that work really well carbonated. So this should be fun. Now I know a lot of people uh, when they get like a soda stream, they buy the soda stream like flavorings like Coca-Cola and root beer or whatever. And to me, those just taste like artificial flavor and a lot of sugar. So we started looking for alternatives. And one of the first things that we came across was cocktail bitters. And you can buy a huge range of flavors like orange bitters. We have lemon and lime bitters. And we started playing around with those. They're not very expensive. They seem like they're expensive because they're, you know, 20 something dollars, but you only use a couple of drops and it makes an amazing flavor. Oddly enough, our two favorite flavors. Now we have lemon and lime, which makes a great like Sprite flavor, but our absolute flav favorites are grapefruit, grapefruit bitters. These are from Fee Brothers. They're great. It's a great line of products. And these are non-alcoholic. So a lot of bitters are an alcohol infusion. So if you don't drink alcohol, the Fee Brothers have virtually no alcohol in them or zero. And we love their grapefruit bitters. It gives a very fresh, light flavor. But our real surprise was cardamom bitters, which sounds like a very strange thing to drink, but it's absolutely delightful. So we're... Oh! So I... I keep big jugs of uh, soda water in the fridge all the time. Soda water, sparkling water, whatever you want to call it. There we go. And cardamom bitters, I gotta say, that this was a surprise. A couple of drops. And that's like all you need. It's amazing. So it lasts a long time and then Drop in an ice cube, not too hard. Smells wonderful. It's got a rich, um, slightly spicy smell. Oh, and the flavor is like incredibly refreshing. I don't know how to describe it, but it's really delicious. So if you want just really simple flavors, and that's, we tend to lean towards fairly simple flavors. So, these bitters, and as I said, if you go to a cocktail website or a cocktail um, store, they have a huge range of bitters, so you can feel free to experiment and discover what you like. Um, if you like things a little bit on the sweeter side, but you'd like to control it, one of the things that we always have around for cocktails anyway, is a little squeeze jar of simple syrup. There's a ton of recipes online. It's basically just sugar dissolved in, in boiling water, hot water. And uh, that way you get a concentrated syrup. And it's an easy way. A little squirt of this dissolves in liquid, even with ice in it. No way. The easy way to add a little bit of sweetness, but not have it so sickly sweet. Another thing that you can play with, and you, again, you can get these in cocktail stores, are these... Uh, flavored syrups and generally the European brands I find are better. This is a lemon lime or yeah this is a lime syrup and it's got a nice fresh lime 
flavor to it. It's not too sickly sweet. And again, just a few drops or an ounce or so into a glass of sparkling water makes it absolutely delicious. I highly recommend this stuff. So these are a few things that you can use to flavor your sparkling water without adding a huge amount of sugar and having it too sickly sweet. And it's really fun because you can get a wide range of these um, syrups and bitters in a cocktail store or online and you can play around and experiment to create flavors that you really enjoy. Okay, so here are two other things that we love to carbonate, that we make ourselves and then we carbonate them and they're delicious. This is cold brewed coffee, right? And this is cold brewed Ruibus tea. Now for both of these, I don't have any fancy cold brew set up. I just use a big glass container that we got from Ikea that holds a couple of liters of water. And to hold the tea and coffee, I put them in a nut milk bag. <laughs> these have become really popular in recent years because people are making like almond milk and walnut milk. And in order to extract the, the nut milk, but not have it full of ground almonds, you, they have these fine mesh bags. They're a fabric, right? You can buy them on Amazon. We can put a link in the description. And uh, you just, I just put the coffee or the tea in that and then put it in the urn of water or, or put it in the urn, pour the water over it. And I just let it sit on the counter overnight. To make this cold brew coffee, I actually get a little bit lazy. So I go out to the grocery store and I buy those little compact bricks of espresso coffee, like Lavazza. I happen to like the Lavazza um, Oro. Um, which is their, their um, gold, gold level coffee, whatever that is. It's all pre-ground. It's espresso coffee. It's relatively strong. And I just take the whole packet, put it into one of the nut bags, and then throw in two to three liters of water. And it makes a nice sort of concentrated cold brew. If you don't like your coffee as strong, you can put a little soda in it and, and, and you know, make it a little bit less strong. For the Ruibus tea, I use around 50 grams of, and it, it comes as a loose tea, so 50 grams of loose tea into a nut bag and then two to three liters of water on it. And you can experiment, you know, try flavors of tea and coffee that you like, see how they come out. That's cold brew. I don't, I don't see why you need to have a cold brew setup. Works really well. And then the next day, I get them nice and chilled put them in the fridge, or actually these ones I chilled quickly by tossing them in the freezer, which is great, as long as you don't forget about them and end up with a frozen thing of, of coffee. And then to carbonate it, let me just pop this off, put on our carbo cap, squeeze out the excess air, and I have my trusty carbonation set up right here. Give this a jet. Good shake. Now I'll warn you, with the coffee and to a lesser extent with the tea, um, uh, because there is some fine coffee grounds in here, not even really enough to taste because the fabric is pretty fine on the nut milk bags, but it does foam up a little bit. So when you're releasing the pressure, don't just blow it off because it'll, it'll give a lot of foam. Oh, and I should mention this stuff, I'm, but the, uh, the other one is Ruibus tea. And Ruibus tea is a caffeine-free tea made from a, what's called red bush. It's from South Africa originally, and you can buy it online or in tea shops. And it's got a delicious sort of citrusy flavor no caffeine, so you have a, a full caffeine flavor here and a no caffeine flavor here, and they're both beautifully refreshing in the summer, particularly. So this is what we, you'll notice as I, as I release the pressure, it foams up quite a bit. And I'm gonna give it one more burst of CO2 because I really like the foam. Give it a good shake. 
so that everything gets CO2 in there. There we go. And you could do this with, you know, obviously coffee, any kind of tea, whether you like green tea, black tea, whatever, just make a cold brew, which prevents it from getting bitter. And it's delicious, cold and carbonated. It adds a whole different flavor when you carbonate it. Just releasing the pressure slowly. And this is the advantage of this setup, as opposed to a soda stream. You can't, if you do this in the soda stream, you could end up with a complete mess in your kitchen. And also you would immediately void any warranty that came with the machine. So this is an advantage of having your own carbonation setup. And when you go to pour, it does, it does give a bit of a foam, but it actually looks a bit like a stout sometimes. There we go. Mm. Now I like my coffee black, uh, but as I mentioned before, if you'd want to add a little bit of sweet to it, a little simple syrup does the trick. Just a squirt of simple syrup will sweeten this. Or if you want to make a um, milk-based drink, you can add milk to this or cream, and it's absolutely delicious. Cheers. Mm. It's amazing how the carbonation adds just a completely different flavor level to the just plain coffee. So if you like coffee or tea, have a shot at carbonating it because I think you'll really like it. So now we're going to talk about some cocktail things you can do with the carbonation setup. Now, a lot of people talk about cocktails like um, Manhattan's and um, another one that's really popular is gin and tonics. The Manhattan is great. In fact, I make batches of Manhattan's and I age them in a wooden barrel, an oak barrel, and then I carbonate that. And it, it's really nice because it, it sort of takes the Manhattan from what I think of as a fall winter drink into the realm of sort of a summer drink because it's sparkling, it's a little brighter, tastes really good. Another thing we really love is gin and tonics. Nothing like a gin and tonic on a hot day. So rather than buy tonic water, which we tend to find again, a little too sweet, um, we actually use Jack Ruby's tonic syrup. So you use like an ounce or so of this syrup, your gin, and then carbonate your own carbonated water, stir it together, add a squeeze of lime, and you've got a great gin and tonic. And the nice thing is using the, the tonic syrup, you can control how much of that tonic flavor you get and how sweet it is. Um, if it's not sweet enough, of course, simple syrup to the rescue, the bartender's friend. So, those are some cocktails that we carbonate and keep around. But my favorite for a carbonated cocktail is a Negroni. And a Negroni, it's a classic cocktail. What's really nice about it is it's an equal parts cocktail. It's equal parts gin, sweet vermouth, and Campari. Sweet vermouth is, as, the, as it implies, a sweet flavor and the Campari is quite bitter and so they create this beautiful balance and when you carbonate it it really lifts the drink in a beautiful beautiful way so we really like these and the fun thing about these doing these cocktails is you can make up a large batch carbonate a full bottle full keep it in the fridge and then it's ready either if you're throwing a party you can do a whole batch for the party or if friends drop over, you have beautiful carbonated cocktails to serve them. Or if you're going to a party, take a bottle of this, you'll be a real hit. So let's just make up an equal parts Campari. So I'm going to do three, no, 200 of gin, 200 of sweet vermouth and 200 of Campari. Um, I'm measuring in mils, by the way, and I have this little beaker here which should give us a good amount. So, two 
200. I know this isn't the most precise way to measure, but we're just getting proportions, really. Two hundred sweet vermouth. I need to see what I'm doing here. That's four. And 200 mils of Campari. Equal cocktails are so simple to make. And the nice thing about equal parts cocktails is you could scale them up and down as you need. So there we go. So that's all made. There we go. So we're just going to use my handy dandy silicone funnel to pour this into the bottle. It's a beautiful color, isn't it? There we go. Oop. <laughs> Try not to spill because it's colored. Put on our carbonation cap. Give it a good little shake. And if you want more carbonation, it's always a good idea to double carbonate. Just let it off, squeeze it out, and give it another blast of CO2. Yep. Get up. There we go. Perfect. And now we're ready to serve it up. We're ready to serve a party. <laughs> so grab a rocks glass, nice big block of, cube, of clear ice, which I just got makers to make. There we go. And as I mentioned, this is great if you're throwing a party. It's a nice simple thing you can make in advance and then have ready for your guests. And I can guarantee you they've never tasted this before. Comes out nice and sparkly. Little slice of lemon rind or orange if you want. Cheers, a sparkling Negroni. Oh, that's dangerously addictive. So, one thing that we've been getting into a lot lately is Amari, and it's a, a grouping of um, uh, usually herb infused alcohols, mostly from Italy, but now they're starting to be produced all over the world. And they're delicious ranges of flavors, all kinds of different flavors. Um, and they've been gaining in popularity these days. Um, and just a little splash of bitters. This is a Verna, which is from Sicily. Um, a little splash of this in your soda water is absolutely delicious. It makes a great refreshing summer drink. And then I'm, I'm always playing around with cocktails. So I came up with another little cocktail using Amaro and dark rum. Love dark rum in the summer, it's great. So this calls for half an ounce of dark rum. And you can play with the proportions and it'll change depending on the bitters that you're using, the Amaro that you're using, because they're all very, very different flavors, but they're really delicious. And an ounce of bitters. They say this is a Verna. Oh, it has a really rich odor. Mm, so delicious. 
and a couple of splashes of orange bitters. Works really well with this combination. Whoa! There we go. Drop in an ice cube. There we go. And top with some soda. This is a great, like, outside by the pool kind of drink or a summer party. It's not too strong, but it's got a wonderful flavor. Mmm. Rum, amari, bitters, absolutely delicious. Now here's a cocktail idea that I completely stumbled upon inadvertently. And this is how it happened. In the summers, I often like to make something called granita, which is an Italian drink, uh, which is sold in cafes and bars all over Italy, especially in the summer. And basically what it is, is frozen espresso ground up into like a slushy. And oh, it's so good. Uh, so in the summer, sometimes I like to freeze ice cubes of espresso. So I make a couple of batches of espresso, throw them in an ice cube tray and freeze them. And then I can put them into an ice grinder or a blender, just chop them all up. Absolutely delicious. So I had some espresso ice cubes frozen in the freezer and I was thinking about a cocktail and I came up with an interesting idea. So here's something we can do. Take some dark rum, and you don't have to use like dark, dark rum. You can use a medium rum. It would probably work okay with a white rum, but I tend to prefer darker rums in general. So take some dark rum and this by itself is absolutely delicious. And I keep my rum in the freezer anyway, because that's generally how I like to drink it. So I'm going to take, ah, do a little more. Take some dark rum and carbonate it. This is, again, what I love about this setup is I can carbonate whatever comes into my head. So carbonating dark rum, why not? And I actually do this in the summer fairly frequently because it really is delicious just by itself. So I had some rum carbonated in the fridge or in the freezer and some espresso ice cubes. And I thought, oh, that might work because rum and coffee is a classic combination. So take a couple of espresso ice cubes and And just pour a bit of rum on those espresso cubes. Give it a little bit of a stir just to dissolve some of the coffee in the rum. And this is one of a, a very unusual cocktail where the ice dissolving makes the cocktail better and better as you drink it. This is really, really good. Cheers, the espresso rum cocktail. Oh, it's so delicious. I was really shocked. It's like this sort of magical transformation. It doesn't taste like espresso, doesn't taste like rum. It tastes like something completely different and I love it. Hmm. Oh, Nadia, this is fun. We should do cocktails more often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, while I'm thinking of it, another great cocktail to carbonate is sangria. Because most people make a sangria with the red wine and the fruits and, the, and a liqueur or something like that, and then top with soda, which is okay. But you can also make it, in, make it in advance, put it in a jug, and carbonate the sangria itself. And then if you want to add a little bit of soda, you can do it, but if you don't want to, it's great just on its own.
One thing that people who do carbonating uh, talk about a lot is making sparkling wine by taking white wine and carbonating it. And it does work. Um, it tends to taste a little bit different than a sparkling wine, but that's okay. But I was thinking about that and I came up with an interesting idea for a sparkling wine, and that is to use a white wine, but throw some grapes in it, because these grapes are delicious. And they add a really interesting flavor to the wine. So, what I do is I just take the grapes, slice them in half, and pop them into a bottle that I'm going to use for carbonation. Bigger grapes, sometimes I have to quarter them so that they'll fit in. Now, unfortunately, we are going to have to sacrifice the bottle in order to get the grapes out. <laughs> but it's worth it. It's only one little small size bottle, so you can buy a bottle of soda and make the sacrifice. Here we go. And the trick with this is the pressure, I think, pushes the wine into the grapes. So they come out tasting fantastic. And you can put as many or as few grapes as you feel like putting in. I'll keep going a little bit. And again, this is a great thing to prepare in advance for a party. Really a nice summery thing. That should do us. Open up a bottle of white wine. Now, if you can do this a day in advance, it's really great because you really get the flavor of the wine pushed into the grapes. Here we go. Give it a good shake. Get all that carbonation into the wine. So you're making grape carbonated wine. It's really delicious. Again, this one I have to warn you is highly addictive. We served this at a dinner party and people were fighting over the grapes. This goes into the fridge and you can let it sit in there as long as you can, overnight, whatever. It'll just infuse more flavor. A few hours later. And here is our white wine and grapes. Don't mind the splash. I had a little soda explosion while we were prepping, but that's okay. It's soda, it won't leave a mark. So, this is ready to go. Just release the pressure. Woo! That's a foamy one. The grapes make lots of, of surfaces to foam on. But just be patient, it will go down. There we go. And that's sparkling wine. Now to get the grapes out, I don't, oh, maybe I could nab them with this. Let's see how successful that would be. Well, maybe. Yeah, not likely. And how many people have big, long tweezers like that? So you can just sacrifice the glass or sacrifice the soda bottle. I know it looks weird, but it's worth it. Now, I've seen people do something like this with an EC server, like the bartender, the soda uh, cans for bartending. They have a bigger top so you can actually pour the grapes out, but this works fine for our setup. So you can grab a couple of the grapes, put them in the bottom of the glass. And you have a nice pourer. Pour a little sparkling wine over it. 
so pretty and really, really tasty. Mm. That's amazing the flavor. And the best part is the grapes themselves. Delish. <laughs> you know, I mentioned that a lot of people uh, carbonate white wine to make a sparkling wine. Um, and I was thinking about that and I thought, I wonder how that would work with a sake. Because we do like drinking sake and we, we like to have it chilled and it's really refreshing. But what could be wrong with sake with bubbles? So let's get, now we, we haven't even tried this yet. You're going to see this first time right here because it just occurred to me recently. So we're going to give this a try and see how it works. And this is a clear white sake that's actually made right here in Ontario. So we can just put this in the bottle. Cap it. Let's give it some carbonation. See if this works. There we go. That looks like plenty. Again, when you release, just do it slowly because it will sort of bubble up. It's now sparkling sake. Ooh, that looks pretty. Pour a little tasting. Wow, that looks so pretty. Oh, that, that is delicious. That's absolutely, whoa, that's wonderful. Hmm. How do you want to taste? <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. It actually slightly changed the flavor of the sake. Well, when you carbonate things, you put a little bit of, of carbonic acid into it and it gives a little sharpness to the tongue and it works really, really nicely. I think that's a discovery. It's very good, especially if you're having something cold. Mm, yum. Not for warm sake. No, which is also, warm sake is very good. Mm -hmm. This is for a chilled sake. So I'm just gonna repressurize this so it keeps mm. and then it can go back in the fridge. Yum. Okay, one last thing I wanted to mention. We are fortunate enough to have a really nice brew pub nearby us and they sell their beers in growlers. And they often have like special edition beers and stuff like that. So I actually like buying a growler of beer. It's actually sort of fun actually to bring home, bring home fresh beer, but of course, I can't drink this in one setting or even a couple of days. Um, so I thought, hey, I know how to keep it. There we go. Comes in here. And the first pour is always a bit tricky, but that's okay. And pour myself a glass of beer. There we are. Mmm, very nice. And then with whatever's left over, I just grab this and pour it. Now it's a little tricky because you sort of want to pour on an angle so you don't get up too much head. And sometimes you have to wait for the head to go down a little bit like this. Just let it settle for a bit. And actually I find sometimes just do this. Ooh, yeah, that leaves a little space. You open it up carefully. So 
wait for the head to break up a little bit. And with a little bit of patience, you can get the whole growler into the bottle and then just carbonate it like this. There we go. And that will keep in the fridge and you can have your beer for, ready for you whenever you feel like a fresh beer. That's one last thing you can do with your carbonation system. All kinds of different flavors, cocktails, and have fun with it. <laughs>